today we try to figure out what turned this old boomer into this guy that swerves in and out of traffic, chasing motorcycles, and flickering his high beams. In an exciting episode of Chill the Fuck Out, Mail Karen. So we return to the intersection where I first saw this guy. Pull up in my lane, I'm sitting at the red light, and we take off. Get going. Move on through. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up ten times. Uh, as you can see, you know, not anywhere near me. Uh, I'm maintaining my roughly 55 mile an hour pace. Uh, not, you know, doing anything crazy. Car in front of him obviously catches up a little bit and backs off, and there we go. Next light, quite a few miles down the road, he's there. Starts taking my picture for some reason. Speed up a little bit, and here we go, we get going. Nothing crazy. The cars to the right of me make their right hand turn, so I go ahead and switch into that lane after it opens up. And he flies up right behind me. Starts flickering his high beams for some reason. No idea what his deal is. Guess motorcycles being able to go faster than his truck is pretty upsetting. And at this point I get up to my 70 something mile an hour uh, speed, kind of holding on for dear life while I hit these uh, bumps in the Pennsylvania highway. He goes for a nice little pass when he finally catches up. Whatever, he's going probably about 90 or so. I'm still trying to figure out the double standard of being upset that a motorcycle went quick from the stoplight so you eventually do felonious speeds to catch up with them and go fast because you're mad they went fast. I eventually switch his lanes up there, starts hitting his brakes, I figure he's probably getting ready to get off the off ramp there. Uh, he starts slowing down quite a bit more, gets up next to me, can't really see it but he's flipping me off there, giving me the old jack off hand gesture. And and at this point, it's pretty obvious he's not getting off the off-ramp. Flashes his high beams again, has his turn signal on. Flashes him again, uh, just stays behind me, um, almost. Gets in a nice little accident here with that car emerging because he's so intent on staying behind me. Uh, when he gets up close, he gives me a nice little honk here. And after reviewing all this, it's pretty obvious that uh, he just got mad because the motorcycle went fast, and in response, he went fast. Rolls down his window, when he passes, gives me a couple more honks here, and then he's on his way. Moral of the story is Karen's make motorcycle riding way more dangerous. Karen! Welcome back to What the Hell, Karen? A weekly satirical take on Karen and the entire Karen family. This morning, Karen woke up refreshed and ready to meet the new day. While out on her morning walk, she spied someone hanging up signs on their fence and took issue with them for some reason. Run! What's wrong? What's wrong? Wow! 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 You're calling me an instigator, but you walked past my house. You legit walked past my house. Oh my goodness! How you? You are a peach. Bye, sweetie. You have a blessed day. Bless your heart. If you want to see what. Oh my goodness! Oh no! Oh no! You have a good one! Bye, sweetie! You gonna come to my house? You wanna come to my house? So, pardon my hair, I just got done with the work and, um, my <laughs> friends told me that they're like, oh god, your TikTok is blown up. Um, I didn't know. I'm, I'm so, I, I'm so shocked. And people want to see what flags were they that made her so mad. So, we have my end gun violence flag, which matches my end gun violence shirt. 
I had have this flag up, this flag. I was just hanging this sign and had not gotten to that sign yet. And then the, the day after, my BLM flag came. So if anybody has any flag suggestions, I have a Doug flag for Cascadia coming up and I'm considering putting an American flag up too, just because we got to have hope for this country. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thanks. Just a quick update on um, flags are all here. Fence is fine. I haven't had a single negative interaction with another neighbor. Um, she's been the only one. Um, in fact, kind of found out that she has a reputation. Uh, she might be known to some of my grocery store workers who she's been verbally abusive to. But I want to go ahead and hammer something home. This chick threatened my property. She didn't threaten me. That's a big difference. I can, my flags can be replaced. My fence can be painted. My fence can be replaced. And I don't know what her life situation is like. I don't know who, who depends on her. So remember that I... I'm sure she's already been doxxed, but I'm encouraging people to know that the social pressure of being publicly shamed by this is enough, and my life wasn't threatened, just my property, and that's okay. I'm fine. That's my privilege. Being HOA president comes with great power, and sometimes not everyone is happy with the power Karen yields. Case in point? Your architecture committee has no minutes. There is no proof that it ever met. There is no procedure. There is no documentation. There is nothing but arbitrary snit and vindictive tyranny. You have destroyed the value of our home. You are about to destroy the value of our home again. You are liable. You are corporately liable and you are individually liable. Your Nuremberg defense will not work. You are not just following orders. You are doing this willfully, maliciously, noxiously, purposefully, despite homeowner objections. You have violated the tenor of the law, you have violated the letter of the law, you have violated your CCNRs, you have violated your corporate bylaws, you have lied to us, you have reneged on contracts, and we're held, being held liable? No, dear lady, no. We will not knuckle under. We will pursue you in a civil court of law. We will expose you. We will expose what you've done using your own records. We will expose what you've done using photography, on film, where it can't be digitally manipulated. We have all of that. Ms. Lester, wasn't the agreement that you guys planted your stuff, but we just need the HOA wanted to maintain it? So the thing in the, the HOA has maintained excuse nothing. Me, excuse me, I'm trying to have a conversation, a civil conversation. I'm not yelling. Oh at no, you're not trying to have a civil conversation. You're trying to railroad this again. You're I'm, lying. I'm not screaming at you. Well, you're you screaming at me. Oh, I'm not screaming at you. If I screamed at you, you'd know it. And if you come any closer, please do not. Can you? Was the, the agreement not supposed to be that we were supposed to? You guys planted it, and I understand that there's a myriad of plants that were available, weren't available, what have you, and that the HOA was going to maintain it, but that you guys weren't allowing them to maintain it. No, correctly. that is not true. That's now, a lie. All right, you have already breached, you've waived the confidential, okay. confidentiality provisions, so here it comes. What the settlement agreement provides is that we are not to interfere with maintenance. Correct. It says nothing about we are not to plant anything. What it does say is that we need permission before planting the rear. Well, right, but we you guys it came to an agreement about the front. That agreement talks about the, the back area, which is right. That's the area, right? And if we just wanted to make them first, so I can show you something? We were forbidden from weeding. Please. We have Harley on paper saying that. So we haven't weeded. Do you want to weed it? I'll weed it right now. If that's too satisfactory, you'll go away and leave us to our own lives. I am tired of having a knife stuck in my gut and my back by you people. I have written to you, I have written to Harley, I have written to the Homeowners Association, I have written to Diesel in Florida. I understand. Whose lapdog you are. This is heinous. This is purposeful. This is noxious. This is malicious. This is destructive. This is trespassing upon private property for the purposes of punishment. It has no basis in law. It has no basis in your CCNRs. It has no basis in your corporate bylaws. You are here as a noxious, malicious, purposeful, destructive act. Karen's long-lost brother is traveling in his car yet again and, as usual, is in a triggered state. Someone he thought he knew simply said they respected a police captain because he donated money to St. Jude's, a hospital and charity that helps children with cancer and their families. I'm really gaining a lot of respect for Chad. Tim! Tim, I know you're watching. 
They were all in on it together. And I disrespected those cops who were treating you bad, Tim. And Chad was sticking up for them. And now you're sticking up for Chad. Now you're sticking up for Chad. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I thought I'd seen it all. Chad Goo was fighting me for disrespecting the cops who stalked, harassed, arrested, tortured, and caged Tim and Sarah. And now Tim Lyons is gaining a lot of respect for Chad Goo. <laughs> Somebody, wake me up. Wake me up. Wake me up. It's a nightmare, right? It's a nightmare. It's not real, right? It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> Tim, gaining a lot of respect for Chad? <laughs> Somebody smack me, bro. I mean, what are you talking about, dude? What the f are you talking about? <laughs> hey, thanks for the five bucks. Don't block him. Five more, dude. Five more. Five more, Chad. No, Chad, I'm gonna come right to your facility, bro. Chad, I guarantee you it takes less than 60 seconds. I'm gonna smack the shit out of you, brother. I will smack the holy shit out of you, dude. I will smack the shit out of you. Once I throw you on the ground, then I'll really beat the shit out of you. Chad, I can't wait, Chad, I can't wait. Cause I'm gonna come there and I'm gonna show everybody you are a wussy. I'm gonna throw you on the ground and I'm gonna smack the shit out of you, dude. <laughs> as it turns out, Karen's husband is on the HOA board as well, and it seems that he may be doing some misappropriating of funds that the homeowners in the community did not approve of. One homeowner takes this story to the local news who reports on it. You know, I, I want to say up the top, there's probably a lot of great HOAs out there. I don't hear about those. <laughs> yeah. I hear about these. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hear about the HOAs giving violations to people who park in the street, or HOAs that won't allow certain paint colors. But this one is different. Watch what happens after one woman begins her own investigation into how her fees are being spent. Did the record show that, that we have a record? And I thought, what is going on? I don't, are you willing to? A regular yeah. HOA meeting at Superstition Lakes Condominiums in Mesa turns oh, ugly. What are you trying to accomplish with all this harassment and bullshit that's, that's coming on? Are you trying to destroy the community that you live in? That's what that a lot of us would like to. Know. Yeah, I do too. I would like to know what's behind What's your purpose for me? Why don't you buy the yeah, Why don't you condo? move if you why don't, 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 you don't, don't like it? Right, like condo owner Kathleen Dario says she was hit by another owner. She recorded it all. Hey, help! Call the police! Turn that off. Call the police! 911! Call 911! Call 911! You touched, you touched me. I was frightened. They had kept my husband out of the meeting, and I had no idea what was going to come next. So how did a calm community get to this point? Money. Kathleen and some other condo owners here thought they were being hit by meaningless violations and not told why. So they turned the tables, and they requested financial records from the board. What did you find? Oh, my goodness. So this is what I saw as we were going through. Once they started going through the piles of receipts, invoices, and account listings, they say they started to notice some unusual purchases, all of which they say were reimbursed with HOA money to board president Michael Cassidy. I mean, they bought laundry detergent and, and almonds and vodka and baby wipes and and every, just about every time they bought air fresheners. Kathleen says she couldn't find any of these items were used by the HOA for the benefit of the condominiums. We found out that the president turned in receipts for items that he purchased in New Jersey. Not to mention the restaurants. Old Chicago's for 79, P.F. Chang's for $100. On the border, 85, O'Sullivan's, 73. More old Chicago's, 116. He was reimbursed for those, and one of the biggest thing was they, you know, we saw 640 dollars to the salt seller for the for the annual meeting, and there's three board members. Kathleen says she has a receipt from one restaurant showing 121 dollars spent on alcohol. These condo owners say they didn't get notice of the meetings, and the meetings could have been held in their clubhouse. And he has turned in other receipts, and been reimbursed, with no proof that he actually paid those bills. Like this invoice from Park Pro. Cassidy was reimbursed $591 from HOA funds showing he paid the company for gate repairs. But the company later showed they never did the work. 
the receipt was just an estimate. We don't know where our money is. In all, the homeowners say they found Cassidy had been personally reimbursed by the HOA a grand total of $38,000 in just the last two years. After trying to vote the board out with this petition, which the board largely ignored, Kathleen testified when a fellow homeowner decided to take them to court. Good morning, we will be on the record. In court, Cassidy and his lawyer fought the allegations and explained many of the reimbursements, but continued to deny my request for an interview. Hey, Mr. Cassidy. It's Joe Ducey with ABC 15. Hi. What about all the restaurants you've been eating at and the thousands of dollars spent there? Is that a good use of HOA money? Can you tell me that? Were you using any of this for your home in New Jersey? That's what, as the uh, records seem to indicate. He only referred me to his lawyer, who denied my request again. But Kathleen and her fellow homeowners aren't stopping now. It's a rogue board, and they're dangerous. Now, the judge in the case rejected the homeowner's request for a receiver to take over the HOA's finances, but he did demand the board release all financial records to homeowners and hold a special meeting to reconsider their petition to oust the board. So, this isn't over yet. Still ranting in his car, Karen's long-lost brother tells us a heartwarming yet tragic story from when he was younger. These people don't understand me, and I think a lot of you guys do. So, they don't understand me. They don't understand that I am not the guy that you decide that you think you're going to bully because I don't care how long it takes. It took me 12 years to become tough enough to beat up every single bully who ever bullied me. And there's only one who got away and he died. Fact. So, and by the way, it was sad when the 15 year old kid died. But just so you know, I remember feeling no empathy and thinking that maybe I was the devil. And thinking to myself, that kid died, but he bullied me with two other boys one time when I was 12. And I never got a chance to get payback on him. And I wanted to. I was more mad that he died in that car crash and because I didn't get a chance to beat his ass. And every single kid who bullied me up until I was 12 years old, I beat the shit out of every one of them later in life. Every single one of them. Ask anybody in my hometown. If anybody ever bullied me, before I was 12, later in life, I whooped him. Whooped him in front of everybody. So, you know, same thing here. You think you can bully me? I'm going to whip you. I'm going to whip your ass. And there's going to be a, there, there's going to be a, there's going to be a payday. There's going to be a payday. And now for a, what the hell, Karen, update. Remember this woman from episode 53? I said, I'm not leaving. Call the cops. I've done nothing wrong. I'm trying to buy something. And he's like, I'm not discounting anything. I'm not selling you anything. Get out of my store. Like pushing me out, like walking me out, not touching me, but like pushing me basically out. And then I turn around and you're going to be rude. Go back to your country. Go back to your country because he wasn't from here. That was it. And I mean this sincerely for all the people in the back. You ain't going to fucking respect Americans. Go back to your country. Respect is or not given. Don't be fucking rude and work in customer service um, for one. So I turn around, I say, go back to your motherfucking country and learn some fucking manners before you come here. Whatever the fuck I said, spitfire, as always, you know how I do. That was fucking it. Back in New York, the word fuck is not really like offensive, but I understand we live in a day and age and everybody's not from New York City and everything is sensitive to everybody who's not from New York City. So the gay guy got really offended when I said for him to go back to his country. Get out of here, you fucking cunt. Go back to your country. Yeah, you ignorant. Go back. Yeah, you yeah, that's your fucking cunt. Yelling, screaming at me. So I finally pull out my phone. I'll show you the end of it. Call me. You heard me. Say it again. I didn't hear you. What did you say to me? Go tell me. Hi. Hi. Okay, you need to leave me. He's being rude. You're being no, rude. No, I'm not being rude. You need to leave. I'm buying. No, you're not any more customer. You need to leave. Oh, I'm not a customer? You're not so customer then I want my thousands of dollars I spend here back every day. No, leave. Leave. So then give me my thousands of dollars. Leave. Give me my thousands of dollars. No, leave. Give me my thousands of dollars back. Leave. Then give me my thousands of dollars back. Out. Cool, you're getting fired. Uh, fired. 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 Here's the video. Been on the phone. Uh, in the parking lot, so customer service complaining because that's not how we treat customers. So Mr. Hansen and Jamie are gonna lose their job today. This is what happens when we fuck with Amanda Marie Kashner. Okay, bye.
This is Amanda Keschner. I was asked about her by the stainless steel rat in a comment from episode 54 and remembered that she put out an apology video. I am only going to show the first 5 minutes and 54 seconds of her over 21 minute apology video. I am not going to link her channel in the description because she is the victim of DV and is owning up to what she said and how she acted. But if you do somehow find her channel, please do not harass her. No matter how we feel about how she acted, she is free to act like a Karen. Thank you. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Amanda, the face behind Art Van Grow and the Seed of Conscious Community. I just wanted to take a moment and reflect as it has been a really wild um, last week or so for me. I wanted to first say um, I would like to take full accountability for my words and I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart for the words that I said that triggered each and every one of you in the ways that it triggered you in a positive, negative, or in-between style of way. I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, apologize that my words and my expression in that moment had triggered so many of you. I apologize for that. That was not my intention. I was being harassed by two men prior to the videos that I posted at my free will. And that was the eighth guy in two months to harass me. Not including my ex-husband, which y'all know the story about. So I just wanted to show you, give you a little glimpse into the why I said those words that were so triggering to everybody else in the world. So I apologize sincerely that my words in that experience that I encountered triggered each and every one of you. I apologize sincerely that every one of you that was triggered by my words have never experienced something like I've experienced before. So you have no idea what it's like to walk a day in my shoes. So I apologize that y'all have not experienced my experience personally to be able to resonate and understand and empathize and sympathize with what led to that moment in time and space to begin with. However, I can't take back what had happened. I can take back what I said. I can't. So instead, I can reflect and I can take accountability. And I, Amanda Marie Keschner, am taking full accountability, guilty as charged, for exactly what I said. And I am standing here in front of you guys via this screen. And I am saying to each and every one of you, I apologize for my words. I apologize that my words had triggered you. I apologize for whatever has transpired after that moment in time. I truly do. In addition to that, I wanted to add, I hope that over time, through your own healing journeys and clarity and integration and meditation and therapy work that maybe one day y'all will forgive me for my words and my actions based off of my experience. I hope that one day you can empathize with what I've been through and forgive me for the words that I said that triggered you so harshly. I really, really, really hope that one day you can but I do understand that forgiveness is not that easy. I do understand that. So if unfortunately you don't forgive me, I will have to live with that. And I will be okay. Um, in addition to that, I just wanted to shine a little bit of light onto something that I am personally going through and this is not justify my actions by any means. Like I said, I take full accountability for what I said. But I just want to let you know, I personally am going through a lot. I have a lot on my plate. I am diagnosed with PTSD, severe PTSD. I used to be diagnosed with anxiety and through the last year and a half of intense therapies, I am actually diagnosed with complex PTSD. 
Um, I will be working with a brand new wellness team and they will make sure that I have the programs, the guidance and the tools that I need in order to not wind up in a situation like I put myself in with the Home Depot situation. So they're going to teach me the proper tools and skills that I need. So therefore my PTSD is not triggered. And then therefore I do not have to say something and project something and trigger anybody else in any kind of way, negative or positive. I don't wanna hurt people. That's not my intention. I'm literally building a healing center. I literally went to school to help people. And I'm doing exactly that here. And I just wanted to jump on here and, like I said, take accountability. And I really truthfully hope, truly hope, that you can find in your heart the forgiveness to forgive me and put this in the past. You do not have to forget. Never forget. Literally, never forget. I'm not asking you to forget about the words that I said. I'm not asking you to forget about the actions that happened. I'm not asking you to forget about me or any of the things that I said or ever done in life. I'm just asking if you can find it in your heart over time to forgive me. Hi, Karen.